Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, Democratic congressional hopefuls took over the state capitol this weekend in preparation for the upcoming election season. And coming up in sports, Kirk Ferentz gives us an update on the brand new football facility. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Rana Mustafa. With the congressional elections coming up in November, Iowa's Democratic Party is trying to gain momentum. Our own Mary Colwell was at the Democratic Convention this weekend. Democrats rallied this weekend to push for an all-Democratic ticket in both the state and national level. Other Iowa Democrats joined keynote speakers Jack Hatch and current Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley in order to discuss each of their upcoming campaigns. Lieutenant Governor to Jack Hatch is Monica Vernon, and she used this opportunity to speak to potential voters to support her campaign. You've got to raise awareness and raise dollars and, you know, just get voters to uh, pay attention. And uh, we think it's time for a change at the top of Iowa. And so we're convincing people of that. She was joined by current Congressman Bruce Braley, who stressed the differences in his campaign compared to Republican nominee Joni Ernst. It's very important, especially for college students, to realize there are vast differences between where we stand on issues that are going to affect their lives. Both Braley and Ernst are now vying for Senator Tom Harkin's seat, who is now dedicating his time to focus on what he's passionate about. Probably the one thing I'll work the most on will be disability issues, because that's mostly what I've done most of my adult life. Reporting out of Des Moines, this is Mary Caldwell for Daily Iowan TV. David Young is now the Iowa Republican Party's nominee at, despite finishing fifth in the third district Republican primary a few weeks ago. Yesterday, Iowa delegates selected Young over Brad Zahn for the third district's congressional nomination. Young will go against Democratic nominee Stacey Apple for this seat in the Congress. And now for a look at this week's weather, we're going to toss it over to Mary Caldwell to see what's in store for Iowa City. Mary? Thanks, Rana. Yesterday was the first day of summer, and you can tell because the bugs are out and the humidity is here to stay. The rain will be settling in tomorrow, and the high will be in the 80s. But look forward to Tuesday, because the sky will finally be clear with a high of 83. On Wednesday, we're going to expect more of the same, with typical summer heat and partly cloudy skies. That's all we've got for you on weather today. Back to you, Rana. Thanks, Mary. Three Canadian prisoners who escaped on a helicopter a few weeks ago were found and arrested this morning. The prisoners were stationed at the Orsonville Detention Center in Quebec City and were found nearly three hours away in Montreal. The three are now back in prison and Quebec police say they will be on, in court on Monday. And now we're going to toss it over to Tanner Sigworth to keep us updated in the world of sports. Tanner, what do you have for us? Thanks, Ron, and we begin with an update on Iowa football's brand new facility. Kirk Ferentz meeting with the media last week, addressing an update on the new $55 million project. Not sure exactly when it's going to be done, but had a chance to go through it last week. We went through it uh, right before the end of spring ball, and going through it last week, four or five weeks later, uh, it's just really fantastic. So very, very excited about that as well. And, uh, looking forward to the first time our players can, can go through and experience it. Can't wait to get it actually into the, the new facility altogether. But yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a big part of being able to get things done here. Pinehurst number two, hosting the Women's U.S. Open this weekend with a final day that began early this morning. Amy Yang and Michelle Wee were tied atop the leaderboard at two under. Both were set to tee off at 12.35 p.m. We'll have the results for you on tomorrow night's show. Finally, moving to the soccer field, women's U.S. goalie Hope Solo was arrested early Saturday morning. The two-time Olympic gold medalist was charged with domestic violence and is being held without bail until Monday, where she will appear in court. Well, we're out of time for tonight. Check out tomorrow's edition of the Daily Iowan for all your sports coverage. Back to you, Rana. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into tomorrow's pages of the Daily Iowan. We'll take a look at the new Democratic Party office opening its doors in Iowa City, and we'll have an update on the progress of Johnson County's financial committee. Well, that's your most current edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out tomorrow night at the same time or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.